give me the cue, like the one of these? <laughs> We're rolling. All right. Oh, well, good morning. Thank you all for staying for Sunday school this morning. And um, it's always kind of funny because um, what Melissa's verse she chose for this morning to discuss, and uh, even a little snippet of what Mark's sermon was about ties into the Sunday school lesson. So. Um, I say it's always funny, but it's no coincidence that, you know, messages are are given to us in several different ways to really drive home um, that meaning and that understanding for us. So what we're going to talk about today is love for enemies, and um, I can't think of a more relevant time to talk about something like this. Um, It seems like everything that we see and hear uh, from discussions uh, and personal interactions and on the news is just about division and what separates us, you know, differences of opinions, differences of backgrounds and and everything else. So um, this one, you know, really hits home and I just uh, want us to really take the time to think about it, um, understand it and hear it uh, as we go into this. So I'm going to read... Uh, from Luke chapter 6, verses 26, 27, excuse me, through 36. And you can follow along there, and then we'll discuss. Um, uh, starting in verse 27, it says, But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that of you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Um, And when Melissa had her scripture this morning, um, you know, from Corinthians... 2 Corinthians, just to repeat it, it said, Every person you see is someone Jesus thought uh, thought enough of to die for. Uh, remember that and how you treat others. So I think some of this stuff really reinforces itself. I'm going to read to you real quickly a story from the lesson. And I think many of you may remember this story in the news. Um, it was about 14 years ago. Um, And it's titled, We Must Not Think Evil of This Man. At 10.25 a.m. on October 2, 2006, Carl Roberts entered the West Nickel Mines School, an Amish one-room schoolhouse in Bark Township, Pennsylvania. After ordering the two teachers and all the male students to leave, Roberts tied up ten female students and settled in for a siege. Within half an hour... With Pennsylvania State Police surrounding the building, Roberts had shot all ten girls, killing just five of them uh, before killing himself. In the face of so much devastation to a tiny rural community, what kind of reaction might we expect? On the day of the shootings, reporters overheard the grandfather of one of the victims say, we must not think evil of this man. In the wake of funerals, where they had buried their own children, grieving Avish families accounted for half the people who attended the killer's burial. Roberts's widow, who, deeply, who was deeply moved uh, by their presence. The imperative to forgiveness went beyond even this. The Amish community also generously supported a fund for the shooter's family. The desire for revenge is one of the deepest of human impulses. Sadness, rage, powerlessness, and a host of other emotions drive us to this. Jesus calls us to something very different, a new way of living in the world. We see this new way embodied in the reaction of that Amish community to an act of unspeakable brutality. Today's lesson, drawn from Jesus' Sermon on the Plain, further depicts the nature of this new way of life. 
So, you know, an example that hopefully none of us have to endure or go through is an example of someone, uh, you know, lots of families losing loved ones um, unexpectedly, um, brutally in a tragic way and responding with love in that aspect, forgiveness. Um, And it's not in our nature to do that. Um, human nature as we're born we're born into sin and sinful nature would be to return sin for sin um, in retaliation but Jesus came to conquer sin and he took uh, you know so much brutality upon himself willingly um, to show us love so I want you to take a second and think about who your enemy is Um, if you have a pen and uh, some paper or something to write on, I would encourage you maybe to jot down initials or just something so you would know. Obviously, it's a private thing um, for you, but I want you to really think of who your enemy is. Um, we can think of examples in uh, of enemies in uh, culture today with just, you know, stories and movies and things when you think about the hero and the villain, who the enemy in that story is. Um, you even as as far as uh, different countries who have enemies and fight with one another in different wars um, and, and things like that. And some people even have enemies when they look at just somebody wearing a different sports team T-shirt. You know, that's their their rival or their enemy. You know, in, in things of that regard. But I want you to really think about that because we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, who were the enemies of the first century Jews? If we think about the time when Jesus was uh, walking the earth, who were the enemies that he ha- uh, that the Jews had at the time? A lot of people um, will refer to the tax collectors or the Romans, um, maybe even Gentiles at that time, um, Samaritans or people that they didn't agree with. Um, who was an enemy of Jesus during his time on earth? A lot of, I'm just giving pause time for thank. You can speak up if you want to, but um, you know, Jewish authorities, the Pharisees, and things that challenged him, um, that could be an enemy considered of him. Obviously, the Romans. Um, some people can go and say Judas Iscariot. Um, Satan was an enemy, obviously, and is still the the great enemy that we face today. Um, whenever you said who was your enemy earlier, and I asked you to think about who you might have as enemies out there because we're all going to have enemies let me just put that out there right now it's okay because jesus wouldn't have put this out there if he didn't know we were going to have enemies um so there are enemies out there but would someone say that you were their enemy um and this is something that you know i have to think about um in interactions with people you know if somebody was asked to do the same thing that has ever been in contact with you would they have put your name down um And it's all just our view of how we treat each other, and it's very easy to look at our own um, experiences and from our own point of view, and maybe not necessarily the other person. So I want to take a moment and uh, break down the scripture that we go through. And as earlier I mentioned when uh, Pastor Mark talked through his sermon from the book of James, um, the first part of this uh, in verse 27, subsection A, says, But to you who are listening... And this is where, again, we have to reiterate the difference between just hearing something and listening to it. Um, It's easy just to hear noise, uh, sound. Um, A lot of the different verses will say, let he who has ears hear. Um, And we think, well, I have ears, so, you know, I'm I'm good to go, right? Um, But what they mean by hearing there is not only just taking in and listening, understanding it, and then taking it a step further and being obedient to what you hear um, really accounts for that wisdom. So that's the most critical piece. Um, Further in verse 27, it says, Love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Um, And as I mentioned earlier, this isn't a part of human nature. This isn't normal for us to do. Um, So it isn't easy, per se, to do, but it is attainable. It is possible to do this. Um, But it is not easy because everything in our human nature will flip that switch and want to uh, retaliate or get even. Um, and things of that. So we will resist that almost instinctively. It's important to note that Jesus knew we would have enemies, as I mentioned earlier. Um, If you don't have enemies, I would ask, you know, are you standing up for Jesus? Do people know that you're a Christian? 
Um, the Bible explicitly talks about the fact that as Christians we will face persecution. Um, we will have people who look at us differently and hate us for our beliefs. It's just the truth, and it's sad, but um, we are called in that instance to not return evil for that evil, but to show love in those circumstances. Um, and Jesus wants us to constantly move towards the idea of perfection. Um, obviously, we, you know, we're not going to be perfect as Jesus is because we have all sinned, um, but to move towards that idea of uh, being Christ-like is what we should all be striving for. Um, in verse 28, it says, Bless them that curse you and pray for those who persecute you. This is love demonstrated in speech. So when we talk about loving your enemies, love is the action. And we have to think about how do we love? How are ways that we love? Um, and, and this specifically is talking about using speech. Um, I think about when Jesus was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was you know, him praying to God uh, for forgiveness for his enemies at that time, using words to do so. Um, do we return kindness for being mistreated? You know, I have a job in retail, um, and you know, we do get some upset people and you know, some harsh words said at times um, when there's not an understanding of the whole situation. Uh, and it's very important that I myself personally have to take a step back take a breath and try to show kindness and respect, you know, uh, for people even, even when you are mistreated. When words can hurt, um, we want to return kindness and speech as well and love and speech. Um, check your prayer list. Uh, it, it talks about, uh, and pray for those who persecute you. So on your prayer list, add that person that you maybe wrote down or mentally wrote down that enemy. You need to pray for them. It may not be instinctively to do so, and we obviously want to pay for, pray for people who need prayer through suffering, but our enemies need prayer too. Um, it's the only way to kind of mend that divide, uh, and, and so we need to make sure that they're on our prayer list uh, daily as well. Um, when we go into verse 29a, uh, it talks about if someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. And this is where love is demonstrated in action. Uh, when it goes into the next uh, section of these verses, um, or in this case, case, omission, meaning to not act. Um, that can be a show of love as well. So, again, not our nature. You know, we tend to retaliate, and uh, Jesus calls us to do things that aren't of this world to separate us. Um, others can't know we're Christian if we do the same thing the world does. So we have to take a step outside of that. Uh, and we can show others Jesus' love by how we act. Further through the verses, uh, it says, If someone takes your coat, do not withhold it from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Uh, again, this is love in action. Do we love our possessions more than we love people? Um, you know, if somebody asks and continually asks, and you think about that person, and you're like, all they ever do is just need something. They only ask for things. They only come to me if they need something. Um, and we have to really consider that are we idolizing possessions or holding on to something like that, or is the love and potential uh, witness to someone else for them to grow in Christ and be in heaven someday the reward that we need? Um, that's the possession we want to have. Uh, is that there? So, um, so when we give to someone, you know, do you expect something in return for that? Um, we always kind of tend to hear about, you know, I didn't get a thank you for whenever I did that. Did you do it for the thank you, or did you do it out of love for the other person? Because if you did it out of love, you don't need anything in return. Um, and, and that's hard to do, because we tend to want something back, you know, you know, when we do something nice or some kind of recognition for it. And we don't want to do things for our own praise when we do them. Uh, it kind of talks about a little bit of a side note uh, outside of the verses. Uh, the Jews look forward to a day of deliverance and the Messiah would fulfill this. So why did they reject Jesus as their Messiah? They knew the scriptures predicted a Messiah to come, but the Jews, I feel, struggled with the idea that their possessions and every reward that they had was 
on earth at the time. They wanted a Messiah who was a military leader and would come as a king of the Jews. And Jesus did not come of, be, to be those things, although he actually was. I mean, he commands armies of angels in heaven as a military kind of thought there. Um, and he is the king of kings, right? But his kingdom is not of this world. And what they thought the Messiah should be should embody what they knew of in the world at the time. Um, what they didn't realize, that, you know, was Jesus was actually uh, these things uh, but with not concern of worldly obstacles or possessions. So getting back into the verses, um, in verse 31 it says, Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. I think we've all heard this as the golden rule. right? And this is where the verses kind of break out into looking at um, not just your enemies but all people. We should do unto others as we would have them to do unto us. Um, it could also prevent us from being that stumbling block for someone else when we do that, so we don't end up on their enemy list, so to speak, that we talked about earlier. In verse 32, it says, If you love those who love you, what credit is that for you? Even sinners do that. Um, and it actually goes through several examples of other things, uh, whether we lend, you know, do good to those, love those. Uh, who love you. There are several examples given uh, comparing what the, the world does easily, but it's a challenge to us to do more and again to set us apart from the world, as I mentioned earlier. In verse 35 it says, but love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expect to get anything back. You know, and can we sacrifice ourselves for the benefit of others? Because that's what Jesus did. Uh, in verse 35, it continues uh, towards the end. It says, then your reward will be great. And this may seem contrary to what we talked about in just a, a few verses back um, as what we discussed. We don't do things for others expecting something in return. Um, we can't seek a worldly return. We don't want things, again, Jesus didn't come to be a Messiah for the world. He, he came to build his kingdom in heaven. And, um, but instead, the eternal reward is with God in heaven. So I'm going to read to you just one more story from the lesson, and then we'll close in prayer. This one's titled, Doing Good on Thin Ice. In 1569, in the Netherlands, Dirk Willem, Willems was arrested for being a member of a group of Christians who rejected certain doctrines. He escaped from, prison, from a prison window and was chased by a guard. Coming to an icy pond, Dirk safely made his way across. But the ice broke under the, his pursuer. Hearing the guard's cry, Dirk ran back and pulled the man out of the frigid water. The guard then seized Dirk and led him back to prison. Soon afterwards, he was burned at the stake. Dirk took the teachings of Jesus seriously. He dared to love his enemy and do good to him. Chances are you'll never have to make this kind of decision Dirk Williams faced. But you'll still have plenty of opportunities to apply Jesus' challenging words. The next time you feel pursued by an enemy, turn around and do good to that person. All right. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us, Lord, through your word, both in scripture, those spoken to us today, through the sermon, through the lesson. Uh, Lord, we just pray that we do hear these things, that we apply them to our lives, um, and that we uh, make action of those things, Lord. Um, it's easy for anybody to hear, and it's even easy for us to understand sometimes something simple in a command, but we just pray, Lord, that you help us to do um, something with that understanding, that we actually show others your love. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much for what Jesus did for us in showing us and being that example, that role model, that mentor. Lord, that we could strive uh, to work towards that, that we don't let uh, things in our own conscience tell us that's not obtainable because it is. We can show others your love, Lord, and we just pray uh, along with your help and guidance that we could do that, that we seek your teachings and understanding in all that we say and do. And we just pray blessings upon our uh, church family here, Lord, and all our community uh, and everyone in this world, that you died for each one of us, and we thank you for that daily. We ask all these things in your son's name. Amen.
Thank you.